Hello and welcome to a Talmud Israeli production. Today we'll review the highlights of this week's course of Daf Yomi study, Masachet Nazir, Mem Aleph through Mem Zayin, 41 through 47. 41. Rabbi Eliezer de Atia Sevedachi Lota Seminale. How does Rabbi Eliezer know the concept that a performative mitzvah will come and override a prohibitive mitzvah, that an assay will override a lota assay, such that you'll be able to perform the assay and not worry about any violation of Torah? Because there's the juxtaposition of the law of Shatnas which is a prohibition of having a wool-linen combination in clothing. And there's the law of the gidilim, the tzitzit, the fringes on the talus. And they are written back to back to tell you that although prohibition of shatnas exists and we can't have wool-linen combinations, the exception to the rule is you can fulfill and should fulfill the mitzvah of tzitzit by having woolen fringes on a linen garment. And from this example, we learn a general rule that ase doche lo ta'ase. 42. Membet. Nazir she'ashote kolayom. What if a Nazir was drinking wine all day? And Uchayv al-Achat, he's only liable for one uh, sacrifice, one prohibition, one liability. Amr lo al tishteh al tishteh, vushote, chayv al-Achat v'achat. However, if he were to be warned, don't drink, and he keeps drinking, don't drink again, and he keeps drinking, then he is liable for every time he was warned, and then he went ahead and broke the rule again. And the same concept applies concerning shaving of the head, that if he was if he did it all day under one warning, then, okay, one liability. But if he was repeatedly warned while in the process of violating the rule, he's going to have liability for every time he was warned as a separate infraction. And the same thing regarding becoming impure through contact with the dead, that if he was warned multiple times over, he's going to be liable for each time he was warned and violated again. Mem Gimel. Rabbi Yehuda Omer, Laitama, the Torah says, for her you shall become contaminated. However, not for her limbs. So we're talking about uh, the Kohen who is becoming Tameh for his relatives, but not for the limbs. That a person should not become impure through contact with the limb of a live body of their father, of their relative. However, you can become uh, Tameh and should become Tameh to bury the limb of a dead body. So a detached aver of a dead person, yes, but a detached limb of a live person, no. Mem Dalit. Tiglacha Tumaketzad. What is the process of the head shaving for a nausea uh, who became impure and has to start all over again? Hayamaze Bashlishi Uvashvi. Well, he becomes sprinkled with the ashes of the red heifer on the third, the seventh day. Megalech Bashvi and shaves his head on the seventh day. Mivakomenosa Bashmini and brings his sacrifices on the eighth day. In Gilach Bashmini, however, what if the head shaving was delayed until the eighth day? Does that postpone the Kurbanot any further? No. Mivakomenosa Bobayom, he can bring the sacrifices on that self same day. So says Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Tarfon responded, no. Ma bein zel metzora. How should how is this different from the metzora? So Rabbi Kiva responded, "Ze the nazir taratot lebeamav." The purification is de- is dependent upon the passage of time of certain number of days. Metzora taratato tigalato. However, the metzora the purification is dependent upon his shaving, and he cannot bring his korban until after he passes Mur of Shemesh, nightfall, having already shaved. That's why there's a, uh, a de- further delay of one day in the case of the Mitzorah, but no further delay in the case of the Nazir. Memhei. Hayanotos arosh nizro meshlech tachaladud. The procedure required that the Nazir, upon shaving his head, would cast the hair into uh, the fire below the uh, pot which was boiling the uh, limb of one of the korbanot, which was going to be eaten by the Kohanim. So, uh, in Gilach Medina, if he shaved outside the temple complex, in the Medina, in the provinces, he would not cast the hair below, in the fire below the pot. When is this true? Regarding Tiglach Atara, for purification at the end of, of, of a full Nazirat term where you were Tahor, you were pure. However, if this was a shaving done after a case of impurity, he would not cast the hair into the, into the fire. 
Rabbi Meir, however, says no. Everyone casts the, the hair into the fire. Except for a person who was a Nazir who became Tamei and shaved his head outside the temple complex. That and only that case where he does not cast it into the fire. But in every other scenario, he would cast the hair into the fire. Memvav. Tanya. What happens if, um, in the case of the Mitzora, he doesn't have the bon yad or bon regal, the thumb or the toe, on which the blood shall be dabbed? So Rabbi Eliezer would say he has no recourse, he can't become pure ever. Rabbi Shimon says, no, no, you could place it on the spot where the detached limb would have been, and that's good enough. Whereas the Chacham say, no, put it on the left side. If you were going to use the right thumb, put the left thumb. Right big toe, left big toe. That just change the sides. Memzayin. Mish nizrak alav echad min hadamim. What happens if a, if a Nazir was doing his korbanot at the end of the term, and he did one of the three, but uh, then he became impure, before he had an opportunity to have the blood thrown for the other two korbanot? Rabbi Lezer, Rabbi Lezer says, well, he lost, he loses out. The first korban now doesn't count and must be redone. But Chachamim Omer, the sages say, no, no. Yavi shar kamotavitar. Let him bring his other korbanot and become, impu- uh, become purified by the regular mechanisms of the Efer Paradum. He'll become pure. So he doesn't lose the korban that was already brought. Amrulo, they said to... Uh, Rabbi Eliezer, there was an incident involving Miriam of Tarmodia, that one of her korbanot was brought, and the blood was thrown. And they told her about her daughter, who was deathly ill. And then she went to her daughter, and the daughter died in her presence. So now she had corpse impurity. And the sages said, she doesn't have to bring redo the korban she already brought, she just has to bring her other korbanot and become purified, and she's good to go. So we pass it against Rabbi Eliezer. Everyone have a great week.